Mr. and Mrs. Greer, uh, then from Council B. Ivory Lamar, and then we will take your questions. Thank you. What was done on um, what was done on the 18th uh, to Mr. Jeffries? There's still uh, lingering um, effects of what is going on. Um, what we want to uh, particularly lead demand is accountability from Hall County and the individual officers that were involved in this particular matter. And we will continue to fight uh, on behalf of Mr. Dewan Greer, his family, to make sure that this never happens again um, in our community. Um, there seems to be a rampant um, just plague of injustice uh, done to citizens at the hands of the police. And what we're de demanding is accountability. Ms. Nix, before you walk away, can you just give us the details of what happened that day two years ago? Well, Mr. Greer was um, arrested on what the police officers described as unpaid child support, though he had proof that he paid child support um, and his license should not have been suspended. He went into the Hall County Jail and he was slammed and dropped on his head and face um, by officers. And then he was also placed in a rap restraint um, for speaking out and just um, just exercising his right of free speech about the medical injuries that he sustained because he was dropped. Um, so that is what happened on that day. And the conditions, he does have lingering effects. He is suffering from PTSD now. Um, he was concussed. He had issues with his eye, as you guys can see um, in the uh, billboard there that we have. And he also had issues with um, his, uh, his uh, was not dentures, but he had uh, work done with his teeth and it was a, a, a prolonging issue that he's had now. And then he also was um, placed in a dirty cell. It had feces um, in the toilet, on the floors, on the seats, the cell was dirty. And though he protested the conditions of the cell, they continued to detain him um, in, the, in the cell while he had an open wound and was bleeding um, from his eye. Um, and it did cause, in, uh, uh, it, it caused, again, issues with his eye, with it being open and exposed to the conditions of the cell. So at this time, we will now hear from our client, Dewan Greer. I'm just fortunate to be here today because um, a lot of guys in the same situation is not here to tell their stories today. So I am fortunate to be here to be able to tell my story. Um, I just don't want it to happen to anyone else. So that's why I'm here today, trying to prevent the same thing from happening to other people because you could come out of a whole different a whole different way that it came out for me. But even with the injuries, I'm blessed to be here. Um, I just want to hold everyone accountable for their actions. How do you describe that moment when you got pulled over at the destination? How did that make you feel? How did it accomplish through that experience? Um, it was really no escalation. I complied. Um, I was upset and angry um, just because I had the paperwork to prove it and all I had to do was take a look at it. But I was angry about that, but I was compliant the whole time. Um, I did voice my frustrations and anger, but I, I was compliant the whole time. So the escalation on the police department, that it escalated from just a traffic stop to an arrest and dropped in your head and all of that. Describe, Excuse me? Describe the escalation on the police part, how it went from you just being pulled over to you being arrested and dropped on your head. Describe how that made you feel. It, 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 it was it was horrible. I was I didn't know if, if I would make it out because I, I, all the stories and everything you see on TV, like I said, a fortunate to be here. A lot of people aren't, and I, I was just scared. I, I wanted to make it back to my family. That's, what, that's the only thing I could think about. Just wanted to make it back to my family. Did you pass out when you hit the floor? You were quiet for some time. I, I, they... I did pass out. Um, I still was able to hear, but but I I, I knew I was out. But I, I was still kind of able to hear what was going on. But yeah, I, I was out for a second. Duan, the video was horrifying, and when counsel said you been having PTSD. You know, we found out about it a year after it happened and now we're on the three year anniversary. What has that been like? Have you even watched it again? Um, my first time watching it was yesterday in full. I, it was the first time I brought myself to watch this whole video. 
and it's still sickening when you watch it and see how I was treated and um, being restrained even though officers on me I got another officer behind me bending me for no reason behind my wrist as you can hear on the video why are you bending me like this trying to like sneakily do it like no one could see him um, I also voiced that in the video I heard myself say and, and, and it, it was just tough but just to this day um, thinking about being pulled over seeing police cars seeing other people pulled over um, it, I get nervous, I get anxious, sweaty, and it's just, and it brings back the, the thought of the whole ordeal um, every time. So it's, it's, it's tough, and it's been tough. Um, and I've been going through a lot of medical issues still um, with my, my dental implants and, and my eye, and I'm still, you know, seeing stuff and everything um, out the corners of my eyes. And it's still, it's just been an issue ever since. It hasn't went away, and, and, it's, and it's tough to, to deal with. What is accountability? What does accountability look like to you outside of monetary compensation? Um, me personally, I, I think it should be some type of um, educational to, to, the, to the officers. Some, they should have some form of education how to how to deal with people better um, other than uh, physical, physical, other than being physical, it should be a way they should be able to de-escalate, talk, and, and, and do things like that instead of trying to, you know, muscle your way to people and, and, and you know, just because you have the authority to um, do do those type of things. Do you, do you think they did it on purpose? Um, me yes. personally, yes, because I, I, I was being compliant with everything else. I mean, they probably didn't like what I was saying, but I have a freedom of speech. I can say what I want, but... Uh, like I said, I was being compliant, so I believe that was their way of, of trying to send a message. Duane, if I can recall correctly, you were already suing them um, in 2022, but this is now. Were, were you suing them? It just wasn't a federal lawsuit? Um, I, I was in the process of looking for attorneys okay. the whole time. Um, I found one, and I called numerous, numerous, numerous attorneys and had to tell my story. 15, 30 minutes of talking to this attorney for them to come back and say, we can't take this type of case things like that. How do you feel about it now being to the level of, you know, you're filing a federal suit? I feel that um, something's going to happen. Um, either the officer should be held accountable um, and, and should be some type of reform inside of that, that jail and basically, basically all jails because um, their, their authority takes over than you know, what their job description should be. And to your attorneys, is the reason why you filed this lawsuit in federal court? Excuse me? Is there a reason why you filed the lawsuit in yeah, federal court? I'll take that. I'm, a, I'm attorney Biagra Lamar. We filed in in federal court, number one. Obviously, um, there are long-term issues that, that are present here. And we believe that the federal law, especially um, these actions by numerous officials, I believe there's 11 defendants that are named in this lawsuit, we believe all played a part in violating um, Mr. Greer's constitutional rights. Um, what we see... I'll give us a go. So what we see, you know, back in 2021 is what we continue to see um, in subsequent events thereafter. We see officers standing around um, failing to intervene when they see clearly other officers that are using excessive force against a person that doesn't have any other means to harm himself or harm anybody. Um, so again, the federal law, we believe, is applicable in this matter um, for that reason, hence a federal lawsuit. Um, again, what we've seen in Tyree Nichols, you know, just earlier this year, that's why we filed these suits. You know, obviously we need justice. We need, obviously the client is deserving of compensation, but it's also important to serve as a deterrent so that we don't have Tyree Nichols and we have examples of officers standing around, failing to intervene um, as they did in this case. So again, um, that's the purpose of it. Um, it's to bring attention so that we all could be protected. And again, individuals that are in the custody of the county jail, whether it's Hall County or down the street in Fulton County Jail are presumed innocent until proven guilty. Um, and again, Mr. Greer should have had those same protections and that same liberty without being infringed by the, uh, the sheriffs out in Hall County. No, this is the first lawsuit. Okay, so it was—he okay. was looking for an attorney to file suit when I first found okay, out about so it in 2022. So I was asking what was the update. Is there anything else that you guys needed them for? 
well, there there are a couple of things. One, <laughs> let, let's be clear. The question about whether or not it was intentional is obvious. Based on what uh, we see from uh, the officer's own body-worn camera, it was obvious that they ignored uh, Dewan Greer's cries for medical attention. You can hear him. You can see the officer from the officer's own body-worn camera close the window to the cell mm -hmm. to basically say, don't bother me. You can hear the voice in the background saying, uh, if, if you don't cut it out, I'll give you something to yell. You hear kind of the demeaning uh, discussion about, we're not going to respect your rights. We're going to be the ones to impose punishment, even though we've not found anything that you've done wrong. So the issue here is, is it okay to violate someone's not only constitutional rights, but in a broader conversation, in all of these instances where we've talked about uh, issues of police misconduct, on the international human rights stage, I come out of that space. I advise Reverend Jackson now. I'm the former CEO of Rainbow Push Coalition. One of the things that we submitted during the middle of all of the discussions around uh, George Floyd and Breonna Taylor is that there is this pervasive sense in the United States that law enforcement officers can do whatever they want at will and then figure out how they're going to frame the narrative later. Mr. Greer still has, behind the sunglasses, the physical scars of what happened to him that night. He still has the knot on his eye, the issues with uh, the facial reconstruction, his dental work, and the emotional harm that affects not only him, but affects how he relates to others, particularly his family. And so let's not get this twisted that there's no amount of money that can unring this bell about what was done to him that night. It just happens to be that one of the components to make him whole has to be a consideration of damages. But unless we're going to change the system, and unless the system pays attention by way of this lawsuit and others, you're going to be out here covering another story. There'll be another Dewan Greer in some space where law enforcement officers who can take your liberty and your life have a duty to protect your constitutional rights, and you will see another situation. This is probably more horrific because this doesn't come from a social media feed. This comes from body-worn cameras inside a jail. So this will be a movie that no one wants to see because it will turn your stomach to hear and to see the images that we've looked at and Mr. Greer endured, which is why we are here today filing this suit and making sure that there's not just accountability for Mr. Greer, but also for any one of you that might run into law enforcement who decides they want to go rogue on the spot without accountability. So with that, we'll see you in court.